In this tutorial, we're going to be covering screen creation and all of the settings that you can change when you're creating screens. So to do this, I've started out in the workspace editor. So if you're not already there, then once you open up PVP, you're going to see a screen similar to this and you can click the pencil icon in the top right corner and that's going to open up the workspace editor. Next, you're going to want to make sure that you've selected the screens option here in the top right corner to show all of the different screen properties that we can change. After you've done that, you're going to want to make sure that you actually have a screen that we can actually change all of these properties for. So to start out with, we're going to click on create new screen here at the top. And that's going to open up this menu here that's going to show all displays that are currently connected to the computer. So at the top, you're going to see those that are connected via HDMI, DVI, VGA, mini display port, something like that. Up next is going to be any black magic device connected via Thunderbolt, PCI, or perhaps USB 3. Underneath that, you're going to see NDI, and this is a network video option. And so any of these things here that you create, this is going to be an output that's going to send video over the network that you could then pick up with another program. Below that, you've got Siphon. Siphon is going to be an output from PVP that you could pick up with another program on the same computer. And then lastly, you have a custom screen. Custom screens can be used if you need to create a show, but you don't have immediate access to the actual screens that the computer is going to be hooked up to. You can use custom screens and then come back and link those screens to the actual outputs once you have your computer plugged in at that time. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to go ahead and create an SDI screen here. So we're going to go ahead and get this screen going. Here it is right here. We can move it around in the workspace editor wherever we want to position it. And you're going to see just initially some information here that helps identify this screen so that we know exactly which screen this is that we're working with here. So you'll also see as you add more screens to the program, those are going to show up here under configured screens in this list up here on the top right. Just below that, there are two different options, one that says start identifying outputs and another that says start identifying screens. Clicking on either of these options will show you on your final destination, be that a TV, a projector, uh, one of your NDI or siphon outputs, it's going to actually identify those outputs so you know exactly which is which. We'll talk a little bit more about the difference between outputs and screens later on, but just wanted to show you that those two options exist right there. Underneath those options are properties for the screen. So you're going to want to make sure you have the screen selected and you'll know you do because you'll see the little white selection beads right there. So you have the ability to change the name of the screen. You can type a new name into this box and that will replace what says screen one right there. You can change the color of the outline of this screen. So if we change it to red for a moment, you'll see that that screen is now red and the information inside is red. So that would help you quickly identify it if you're looking to figure out which screen is which. Then below that, you also have position. That's the position here in the workspace editor. So I can click and drag the screen around or I could type new numbers in or change them with those arrow keys. Up next is the size. We're going to keep this at 1920 by 1080 because that is the size of the output that I'm looking for right now. And just below that is the option for aspect ratio. And I have that locked right now so that even if I was to change the size of this, it's going to keep that 16 by 9 aspect ratio the whole time. After aspect ratio is the rotation option. You can either click and drag on this wheel here and that will rotate the screen or you can type a new number here into the box or use the arrows if you want to make very fine adjustments to actually rotate the screen. This would help if you have perhaps a screen that's vertical instead of horizontal, then you can create that vertical screen here in PVP. Just below that, you also have a divide screen option. And this is actually going to divide this one screen up into however many options you choose here for rows and columns. And then you can go ahead and apply that or you can cancel out of it. And below that, you have output options. Your first drop down menu here is just showing you simply which screen you're linked to. And you can see also that you're linked by this green little link icon here in the corner. If your screen was unlinked, like if we were using custom screens, for example, we can go ahead and create a new custom screen. Then you'll see that it, this is orange, meaning that it's currently not actually linked to a real output, but that this screen is here. Whereas this black magic screen here is linked to the Ultra Studio HD Mini. So as soon as we take this screen and actually link it to a real screen, then you'll see that this icon turns green, letting you know that you are actually linked to a real screen. And just below that option is the output target. With the output target, some devices require that only a subset of that output actually be turned on. For example, you may have an LED wall or other fixture that will require a 1920 by 1080 signal from the computer 
even though it's actually going to be using fewer pixels than that in the ultimate image. The output target feature allows you to select a subset of the output that PVP will use for this feature. You can click the disclosure triangle next to output target if you do not see these options to reveal the rest of those options there. And you can set the position and size properties for that resolution and position for your device. You can also click the checkbox next to lock to lock the aspect ratio again, just to make sure that it keeps whatever aspect ratio you may need. You can also click the visual editor option and the visual editor allows you to see a visual representation of the full output on the canvas. You can then click and drag this new box to adjust the output target visually and you can see down here in the left hand corner that it's showing you an icon of exactly how much of the output you're actually going to be displaying there on that screen. And then you can click the reset option to go ahead and reset that back to normal. These are a lot of settings that you may not need to use normally, but again, there are a couple different scenarios where you may need to take advantage of these options. And last but certainly not least, down here at the bottom is corner pinning, and that will be covered in depth in another tutorial later on. So that's the basics for creating screens and changing properties for screens. The next step would be to add targets to those screens so that you can output from PVP. And you can definitely check out that tutorial and more at renewedvision.com.